very many times I've found myself questioning people who take things out of context. And of course, one of those things controversially is going to be scripture. You hear people saying, I can do all things. And they are quoting something outside of context. No, you cannot do all things. Of course, they will say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That means that they can be a doctor, they can be a pilot through Christ who strengthens them. But if they can be all those things, then Christ could have created them that way, don't you think? Anyway, today in the podcast, I am addressing this subject that I've titled Five Reasons You Cannot Be Anything You Want to Be. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. I know it could be controversial, yes. But today in this podcast, I'm going to attempt to kill two birds with one single shot. And these two birds are simple. First, we're talking about careers in life. And then secondly, we're talking about spirituality, things to do with calling, things to do with purpose. And so I ask you the question, is it possible for you to be anything that you want to be? And I know there's even a song about that i know we that's how we advise our children that's how we want to inspire our children that you can be anything you choose to be you can be anything you want and there's some kind of truth in that but there's also some kind of untruth in it and uh, i'm going to address those things today and when you look uh, looking at it from the spiritual circles or spiritual angle like i've already alluded to in the introduction People will say, I can do all things. I can do everything. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The context is absolutely different. This man who wrote that particular portion of scripture, he wasn't talking about doing things. He was talking about giving. He was talking about people abounding in giving, people helping one another. And he was talking about his situation. He was saying that, I know in some cases in my life, I've been in situations where I've been abounding. There's so much abundance around me. But also there are some cases in my life where there's been a lot of luck. And I have lived in those two extremes. And for me, that's okay. Whether I'm abounding or I'm in luck, I'm okay, I'm content and I can do all things. He was talking about those two situations. And I know at times we take scriptures literally and we want to run with them literally. And I know sometimes it pays. But the general concept, the general principle in life, even in the same scriptures that you are quoting, you can do all things. It is not in line with that thought that you can do anything you choose to be. Today you can choose to be a pilot. Tomorrow you can choose to be a doctor. The next day you can choose to be whatever it is that you want. It is not in line with the very scriptures because there are some guys who were given special abilities to do special things. There are some guys who are anointed to be leaders. There are some guys who are given special abilities to be advisors of kings. And there are some guys who are big who are given special abilities to make contextual, spatial, mighty, visionary artifacts. So people are different, even from scripture itself. So you cannot go around telling people that you can do all things through 
anyway i i know it is absolutely controversial because i believe that you and i'm going ahead of myself very very far you were designed to do something one thing that's why you are gifted the way you are gifted that's why you are speaking the way you speak you have a temperament the same way i mean th- that way that's why you have that kind of a heart that kind of a spirit that's why you have those kinds of gifts that you are operating in you are not given gifts for everything you are given gifts to function in a particular line that's why you hate some things you hate school but you love football okay so you cannot say you can do all things to Christ he is not forcing you to that's the essence is that god is not forcing you to do things god has already equipped you to do some things that when you will find yourself smack in the middle of doing them you feel the pleasure you feel the thrill of god doing it see my son is 8 years today and uh, the question will be can he do is it possible for him and even my daughter who is six is it possible for them to do anything that they want in 20 years from now anything these are yes and no question either it's a yes or it's a no but let us twist the question are you and i anything we desired to be when we were kids are we living our dreams so to speak of the things that we we were desiring to be my story of papa's pursuit is a bit bizarre at some level and i honestly desired to be a lawyer when i was in primary school and high school i think i really desired to be a lawyer probably it's because of the environment i was living in i saw human rights lawyers doing constitutional uh, agitation and and so on and so i felt that those are the guys who were making things happen and i wanted to be like them they were my heroes those days when that did not happen because i needed to have to qualify for that i did not check out on life i continued living i reached out for another dream and basically i felt more alive in the new dream than the one of being a lawyer but frankly i must say that i lowered the dream expectations on myself to suit the bracket that my high school results gave me i didn't like dream outside of what my results were because i wanted to be a journalist and see the journalists and the lawyers were the guys who were inspiring me in those days because of their bravery as Kenya was agitating for constitutional reform the leading school of journalism in the country needed me to go with a minimum of a c minus but i had a b minus so maybe i was overqualified and they did not take me i can blame it on corruption right there but uh another dream just went by and then deep inside of me i really knew that i could write and i knew this from high school no from primary school because every time the teacher would give us an essay to write especially in my final year in high school people would know that this is lawrence's forte this is like him is like fish swimming in a pond this is him this is his This is this is his territory for the rest of us let's just fight for the second position and invariably for the most part every single time the writing challenge came I came tops and I thought I could write and I thought I could become an author I dreamt of becoming one and the thing is that to be honest with you it always sounded so far fetched as in i loved reading books and i would see people have written books and their names are on the top of the book as the author and i'm like man goodness having writing a book like this i thought it is far fetched it is out of my league but the desire and the ability was within me i could not imagine myself being the brain behind a volume but i loved it i loved it So while all this drama was happening my parents decided uh, 
especially when I fail to get a degree to go to, I mean, when I fail to get the grades to go and do law and to go and do any kind of degree in school. By the way, this is where the rubber meets the road. See, you say you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you, and then you sit for an examination. (laughs) Numbers don't lie, do they? You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You want to become a lawyer and the results come. You needed to have a B plus, you have a B minus. Did Christ lie to you? Huh? You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You want to go to journalism school and you don't get a chance, although you are qualified. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. See, that is where the rubber meets the road. So when all these things were happening, guess what? My parents go out there and they come back and say, Lawrence, we have decided you're going to go to medical school, Kenya School of Medical, whatever it is. You guy, I have never been so repulsed by an idea. As in me, medical? Are you kidding me? Where Are you, are you okay? Are you in your right mind? Where have you been? Have you ever seen me? so much in love with these things to do with medicine and pharmacy and hospitals and clinics i can't stand blood i can't stand seeing people suffer in a world i can't do medical see our parents led us with an iron fist as in you will not have an opinion of, of your own while growing up we were suppressed we were subdued it's basically like they obeyed God when God said, Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue. <laughs> they subdued us. They had dominion over us. But ladies and gentlemen, when it came to them telling me to go to medical school, that subduing came to a halt. It came to an end. I was repulsed by the idea. I couldn't do it. I refused. I cannot stand the sight of people in hospital and blood and injections and and suffering. For once, I became a rebel. And I told my parents, off for the very first time in my life. And even up to date, I have absolutely no apologies over it. It turns out that my life growing up in terms of career had always been mad with questions and mad with worries from... Uh, maybe I've been a center of a lot of worry in my family. How is it going to be for him? We thought he was the gifted one. We thought he was the smart one. He asked in, he was the tops in the primary school. He had so much promise and now he doesn't have a degree. What is going to happen to him? And uh, people will complain, can we, uh, dad will be put under pressure. Can you get a job for him? And every evening after a meal, the family will sit around and discuss my fate. And it was just disheartening and I can do all things through Christ. (laughs) maybe that's where the scripture would have come but anyway i became a christian no 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 i was not forced by desperation to become a christian this is something that was building and when i tell you i became a christian i'm not talking about i became religious no i became a follower of jesus christ i was convicted Now, this conviction, I do not want to explain this to you because it will sound religious, but I tell you this, my heart was gripped and convicted that, listen, there is a future out there, there's a life after death, and the way I'm living my life at this moment in time doesn't, is not commensurate to the kind of life I'm supposed to live after death. And I'm hopeless, and I'm helpless, and I need to set my life aright, And the only way I'm seeing, the route that I'm seeing is to unburden myself and to become a follower of Jesus Christ. It was a conviction. It was not someone forcing me. Nobody forced me to become a Christian. But I was convicted. Probably it's because of the environment that I was living at at that moment in time. But I can tell you this. Even as I speak today, there are people who have been convicted. I do not know of any human being, even if you're calling yourself an atheist, I do not know of any human being who does not know that word called conviction. In that in your sanctity of your soul, in the sanctity of your spirit, 
spirit you feel that there is something wrong with you in terms of your life and there's things that you are doing that are not right the guy who is always cursing like a tractor i mean just churning out expletives the guy who is fornicating the guy who is smoking the guy who is doing they all know that word conviction we all know it as human beings we all know there's something wrong about what i'm doing and i need to make things right that's what happened to me and the difference is that i made the call i made the change there was this revelation I came to my spirit. The conviction was always there, even as I was growing up as a kid, as a child. Let me tell you, this conviction is not only for Christians. It is for any human being. I am telling you, I don't care what religion you belong to. I don't care what the name of your God. I don't care the name of your religion. There is a conviction in your spirit and in your soul every now and then when you are doing something that is not right. You know this is wrong. Even if you've never stepped in church, even if you've never stepped in a place of worship, in a sanctuary of worship, you will be convicted as a human being. That's me. I was convicted that way. And I answered the call. And probably it's because all these things were also converging. The things of my career. The things of figuring out where my life is going to be. And the conviction had always been there. But I remember at an early age, even of five years of age, I had this apprehension about life. That some things are not right. So no, I was not in, indoctrinated, but I have really digressed. We're talking about, <laughs> what are we talking about? We're talking about the five reasons why you cannot be anything you want to be. So anyway, I'm generating my story. Serving God as a Christian in a personal relationship took me to a new high. And the thing about being a Christian, and I'm not indoctrinating you, the thing about being a Christian, I know that there are those do's and don'ts. I know that we can come to that level where we've got to go to church every single Sunday, maybe Wednesday, we've got to do this and do that and don't do this and don't do that. But let me tell you where the rubber meets the road in Christianity is your personal relationship with God. That is the major difference in that you can go to God even now as I speak and you can talk to God like a man talks to his friend. And you can hear from God in very many ways. There is not a single prescribed way that you will know God has spoken. For me, God speaks to me through dreams. For my wife, God speaks to her through dreams. Sometimes God speaks to me through reading. I'm reading something and a revelation comes. And sometimes, very rare occasions, God has spoken to me through other people. And when God has spoken me t to me through other people, it wasn't something foreign. It was something that he already told me. And those guys were already confirming. For example, this a lady who ambushed me in church and they told me, Lawrence, you, you are supposed to serve God. So be very careful the kind of wife that you're going to marry. But you see, I had that conviction already. They were just confirming something that was already inside of me. But serving God and having this personal relationship took me to a new high. A high that I've never experienced before. And I'm not talking about some frenzy. I'm talking about this, this revelation, ever-increasing revelation that is inside of your spirit. Just bubbling over and over again, telling you that you are meant for something greater, something good. You're meant to be used of God. And I approached a pastor of mine and I told him, listen, this is what I'm feeling in my spirit. I want to serve God full time. And so I approached him and he said, no, Lawrence, you cannot quit college because I was in college at that moment in time. You cannot quit college so that you can go and serve God. The, the world today needs people who are knowledgeable because the world is different you don't just need the bible you need to understand the world from very different angles and the people that you're going to interact with in the world they are skilled in different things so you need to understand their language you need to basically study to the apex of your studies and gain a degree even if you can be able to gain a degree before you can come and serve god so that word, that leadership, that mentorship that he gave me was confirmed by very many other mentors as I approached them. And uh, I, I know I told him that I felt, I knew I was cold. And he said, it's fine. I'm not denying the fact that you're cold. But 
you've got to study i mean even david was called but 17 years down the line that's when he became king so you've got to study so if you ask me i've been one of those hungriest people <laughs> of of studying not that i didn't want to study not that i did not want to study even as i speak today there are very many books on my kindle there are very many books on my audible there are very many physical books there are many many writings many researches every single day i'm on google trying to learn something new i'm on in toastmasters trying to grow myself up i'm learning to be a coach i am reading and growing myself i'm building my company i'm doing things on a working basis i'm the hungriest man i can say for information and i devour information a lot so don't be mistaken that i wanted to quit college i wanted to quit studying so that i can serve the call no that wasn't the case and so i have never outgrown that thing of of studying so i finished college and after a while there was some kind of a lapse in my life and then i got a job something about jobs see putting food on the table making it in life paying bills climbing the corporate ladder settling down okay getting married for some reason once people get a job <laughs> purpose is normally relegated to the periphery we even forget about it all together in fact the biggest lie that we tell ourselves is that we would use the proceeds for our job proceeds that we're getting from the job to fund our purpose and that's what we're telling ourselves and we keep doing the job we keep doing the job there's a debate about a job and work which is which and so on and we get lost in the job and let me tell you this it is true sometimes we need to do what we can do in the moment as we move along towards our purpose we need to pay bills we need to pay school fees we need to put food on the table and clothes on our back but how long is that going to last how many people get lost doing this how many forget the reason for their existence in the first place okay and so that thing of i can do all anything through christ who strengthens me becomes an excuse in that you're now doing anything in the job No. See, looking at my brief story, I can I can tell you something and I can ask you, can you identify the common denominator in all my aspirations that I ever had? What is the common denominator? And that's what is plaguing nearly all of us. And those guys who are saying I can do all things through Christ, this is what is plaguing us. I will tell you what it is. There was no structured method of helping me to dream to identify my gifts and my talents to focus on them and pursue them to completion no structured method what was available that played a preeminent part in my life was a structured process of getting a job that's it not a process of understanding my calling understanding my purpose understanding my meaning understanding my why of existence just a structured process of job getting job maintaining job promoting and doing it till i die and unfortunately that is where very many of us are plagued we are plagued where there is little teaching little discipleship little mentorship little coaching on knowing who we are where we come from what we can do what we are called to do and so on and so forth and that's why I'm writing a book and I'm writing a course and building a course content towards that which will be out in the next few months see it still exists today so back to our question can you do anything that you want to do can my children be anything that they ever want to, to become what they taught that decades ago and what they taught me has not changed but let's ask again can we be anything we want to be can ethan and sarah be anything that they want to be frankly it would be unfair to answer that question either yes or no like i said it's a yes and no question without any bit of reflection and so let us reflect number 1 nobody can do anything Let that sink in for a minute. 
okay? Nobody, sorry, nobody can do everything. And when I say nobody can do anything, it is in quotes. See, talking of purpose, we must, of course, talk about the creator. A creator, whether God or man, of anything, does not create something to be anything. You do not create a fridge so that it can be used to put store books. A fridge is not created for anything. It is created for refrigeration, preserving food stuff and so on. So a creator creates something to fit in a specific environment, to operate in a specific way, and to do a prescribed thing. That is why the creator, having conceived the purpose of something, therefore, he goes ahead or she goes ahead and creates it and then equips it with the qualities, the features, the dispositions for its original operation and then places it in the most conducive environment for operation. Thank God I'm in Africa. There's a reason for that. Okay? Thank God I'm male. There's a reason for that. And there's a guy who is, and I think he's a fool. Some government in the Scandinavia countries, I think, there's a guy came out and he said that we are going to scrap up curriculum that says that no man, no, no, nobody is born male or female. I mean, he's stupid. You can see everyone who is born is either male or female. I mean, just a few, a minimal, less than zero point something percentage of people in the whole wide world are born with both genitals. But the rest of us, we are born male or female. That's it. There's a reason for that. So I cannot be a woman. I cannot become pregnant because I'm a man. You get my point. I cannot. Anyway, um, I'm going to get into trouble. So let me not go there. So nobody can do, nobody can do anything right you can do something not anything number two nobody is a robot this is very important i talked about this in some previous episodes human beings have been given a wonderful gift of choice we've been given a gift to select whatever kind of life we want of course with the consequences being noted another thing that we have been given is the desire desire and this desire is not robotized so wonderful the creator is for the most part the true desire of their heart normally mirrors or longs for the purpose for which he created us i gravitate towards equipping people inspiring people i don't gravitate towards syringes and by the way i was gifted i was given a gift of words working with words and a gift of analysis and all those things i was gifted that way and i desired things commensurate to my gift connect mensurate to my talent commensurate to my potential that's why i don't desire to be a doctor i don't i don't care how much you want to pay me as a doctor i don't want to be a doctor okay and i know we can flip it i have desired to be a footballer but i can't i don't have that but for the most part the desires we have they almost always are going to mirror the potential the calling the purpose that is why it is very easy to say that people can be anything that they want to be because the wanting is part of desiring But you will be wrong to say so. How many of us desire to be great footballers? Actors, singers, writers, preachers, lawyers, doctors, engineers, presidents. Huh? But we can't. We don't have the capacity. So nobody is a robot. We have positions, opportunities to choose. We also have desires. But the desire has to be commensurate with capacity. And so you see people going to school, learning to become an engineer, and yet they were gifted naturally to become this excellent cook, this excellent actor, this excellent writer, this excellent banker, this excellent economist. Nobody is a robot. So you cannot try to put in what God left out so that you can be what you desire to be. 
Desire is good but it's not necessarily 100% foolproof. Number three, you cannot be anything you want to be because everybody can be everything they were meant to be. You cannot be everything that you want to be because everybody can be, listen very carefully, everything they were meant to be. Pause for a little while and listen because it might sound confusing and it's not. You cannot be anything you want to be but you can be everything you are meant to be the key word here is can be in other words is still in the realm of choice remember there is a beginner there is a creator but also remember there is the freedom to choose Remember also that there are desires and not all of them are in accordance with the original purpose of the creator. However, if purpose is pursued paramount, I believe that everybody can be everything the creator intended them to be and that will be the day this world has been waiting for. And I've always said, in my own estimation, this world has gone through different revolutions, industrial, agrarian, all these things, uh, mental age and, and so on, the age of the mind, the age of the context. And let me tell you, the revolution that is coming forth, it is not artificial intelligence, it is not space travel. What is coming forth, it is the revolution of purpose. People knowing what they were meant to do and actually aligning their lives, doing it. Case in point, I can tell you right now, we are living in an economy called the gig economy, where people are being paid for their expertise, not for their papers. But I digress. Today, hordes of people are stuck in tasks. They are stuck in jobs. They are stuck in occupations. They are stuck in careers that they hate. And they hate with a passion. I was there before, by the way. What we need to find out is what we really were intended to be, what we were intended to do and have the center of our lives revolve around that. And believe me, it is not some obscure, minute thing. But even if it was, you will still not believe the liberating power of joy and the happiness of doing what you love being exactly what you are meant to be. So that everybody can be everything that they were meant to be, but not, I mean, we were not created to be anything that we want. We cannot do all things. Number four, the reason as to why you cannot be everything you want to be is simply this. Titles count for nothing. I can slap a title on myself. I mean, I know of a country where a job title is enough for some people, even without the perks or the benefits that are coming. Function, though, is more important than a title. I've talked about this on my podcast before. Function should be and must precede a title. If you do it for any other reason or for the other way around, where a title is preceding a function, you will get lost. That's why I can emphatically tell you that my son, my daughter, they cannot be anything that they want to be. He was meant to function in a certain way. She was meant to function in a certain way, the same thing with you and me. And therefore, if he is lifted, if he is filled with a certain talent, with a certain ability, with a certain gifts to enable him to operate in that function, then that's the function that he should be pursuing to do. The other day, I was so cross with some Christians criticizing Joel Osteen for not preaching fire and brimstone, and they are going and say, hey, he's not a true preacher, he's, he's so calm, he's so gentle. You know, you would as well do the same with me because... I hardly do it according to you. I am supposed to do it that way, but I don't do it that way. I am not a Tony Robbins. 
I am not a Les Brown. I am not a Darren Hardy. I am a Lawrence Namale. So I'll do the thing that I... And I know some guys came to my chat the other day and they told me that the quotes you normally send to us, they are too long. Make them this short and, and so on. Listen, that's me. That's my style. I don't want to conform. I don't want to conform. I want to be transformed. I want to be fully me. So titles count for nothing. Titles count for nothing. Function. And function is unique and it varies from one person to another. That's the most important thing. A mouth is for talking, not for walking. Legs are for walking and not for talking, not for grasping things. You cannot clap with your legs, can you? Yeah. So forget about the titles. Look at the function. You cannot do all things. Alright? And then number five. Nature and nature must be paramount. And that's why you cannot do anything. Our society seldom focuses on people's functions and purposes. What we do is that we fill them with information, we fill them with academia and expect them to churn out results. Regurgitate those things at the end of a season on a paper. When they do, we call them successful. We call them bright, brilliant. Then, they then faithfully disciple the next generation through the same arduous life. What we need to do is to inquire exactly why people were born with what they have, where they are. And therefore, we need to nurture what they do have towards fulfilling their function. Okay, this thing of just starting to nurture something and ignore the nature, the nature is what comes naturally. If someone loves drumming, take them to music school. If someone loves speaking, take them to public speaking school. If someone loves research and science and technology, take them wherever place that they do. Therefore, the environment under which my children are growing should be in such a way that it fosters their nature and nurtures them, bringing out the very best of their talents, the very best of their gifts, the very best of their abilities to ultimately fulfill what their creator intended them to do. So the words which me as a parent have to speak in their lives, the environment that they have to grow in, matters so that it can nurture them towards that thing. They were not called to do everything, let me say anything for that matter. I don't think he was called to be a doctor and a lawyer and a pharmacist and an engineer. No. The way I see Sarah, the way I see Ethan, they are totally differently gifted. Same with me and my wife and you and everybody else. The lie out there is that you can do anything and you can do everything. No, you cannot. And I know this has been a very, very long discourse but i wanted to unburden myself and tell you that i believe you and i were equipped to do something specific and i'm not saying that you become paranoid and go to extremes and you just drop about everything no i'm saying get on a journey of discovery and find out where your strengths are and find out where your gifts and talents are find out where you're naturally gravitating towards and where you find the thrill of god and then if you are to study, study in that area. And if you are to increase, increase in that area. Don't meddle around doing just about everything and you become schizophrenic. I think you are born to do something special. And that something special is not supposed to be compared with mine or someone else's. It is just it. You focus on that special thing and do it to the full. I hope this makes sense to you. Thank you so much for listening. And bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.